Good morning, Woodland. If you guys don't mind standing and singing with us, we're going to be singing a hymn. Promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises that cannot fail, when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound you in me eternally by love's strong core, overcoming daily with the Spirit's world. Standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises. God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises I cannot fail, listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on Good morning. I am very glad that you're here with us today. A few announcements I want to share with you. We have a business meeting that's going to be this coming Wednesday. It typically would have been last Wednesday, but because of our mission trip, it got moved. So hopefully you'll be able to join us for that. And where's John? He was here. All right. So um, John and I have been talking during the business meeting this week, this coming week, there's going to be uh, someone that's going to come and give a presentation about the markers that we're putting in our cemetery to s just honor and celebrate and recognize those who have given their lives um, in, in, by serving and are no longer with us. So it's a pretty special thing that we're having an opportunity to be a part of, and we just wanted to share and let you know. So when you see something out there that's different, you'll know what that's about. But I think you'll enjoy it. It's kind of a another teaser, another reason to come and be a part of seeing what God's doing here at Woodland. So hopefully you'll be here for that. Also, um, our shoebox packing. I know several of you grabbed shoeboxes. There's some up here, and I told you when these are all gone, I'll have some more. Don't think you can't take one. We want to do a lot more than what we've got up here. We just don't want um, Clay or Bob or somebody to step back and knock them all in the baptistry. So um, please take those as you feel led to. Also, um, we're hoping to make another trip to Charlotte to help with shoebox packing. 
They haven't released dates for that yet because they're still waiting to see what goes on with the cleanup and they're making that a priority. But if you're interested in going to Charlotte, assuming that does happen, please let me know. We typically leave a morning, come back that same evening. Some people have talked about at times trying to go down earlier, um, have some time just to get there, rest, maybe do some things there. You can do either, but we typically as a church plan to leave in the morning, come back in the after, late afternoon, early evening so that more people may be able to be a part of and don't have to take more days. But if you're able, interested, willing to go, let me know so we can plan accordingly. Also, this Sunday, today, 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock, we're going to have a trunk or treat, the first time since before COVID that we've had this. And the Well Center is the one that's kind of putting that on, sponsoring it. We're doing, at the end of the month, we're doing the fall festival, so they're taking on the trunk or treat this Sunday. If, you're able, if you have children, bring them out. If you're able to be here, there's a couple of guys I know that are helping with parking, love to have some more help with that. I'm going to be here just greeting people it would be a great time just to interact with some people that are in our community. So if you're able to come be a part of that in any way, please plan to do so. And um, I think that um, that's all I've got for this morning. If you're staying with us, I'd like to have a word of prayer as we continue to worship. Let's stand. Lord, we thank you for this past week. And we there's been all kinds of things that have been experienced by the people here. I know I got an opportunity to be a part of a a trip to New York where your hands were just all over that, God. And I'm looking forward to an opportunity to share a little bit more about that. But also know that no matter where we were, no matter what was going on, that you were a part of every single life, you were a part of every single day, you were present in every single moment. And Lord, it is because of that that we come, we acknowledge you as our Lord and Savior, we worship you, we celebrate who you are, we desire, Lord, to give back to you. So, Lord, that is what we come to do with open hands and open hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to start off worship with the proof of your love. If I see but don't have love I waste my breath with every song I bring An empty voice, a hollow noise If I speak with a silver tongue Defends the ground But don't have love I leave A bitter taste with every word I say So let my life be the proof
in, in love, we love loving other people. But sometimes love is hard. Sometimes it's, it, it is a sacrifice, you know. God loved us so much that he sacrificed his only son, and because of that, we can give that same love to other people. And, you know, the Bible says that love is patient and love is kind and it does not boast and it does not envy and it does all these things. But then if love does that, what am I supposed to do? And I think about welcoming God into every prayer when I pray for love. You know, I say, God, I, I want all of my love to be your love. So as I go into the world and meet all of your people, I want them to know that everything I'm doing is because what you tell me to do. So we're going to sing, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. And I want you to invite God into you so that you can spread the love this week. There's nothing worth more
thank you for all that you have blessed us with no matter how great or how little lord we know that it all comes from you please let us take this time now and give back just that small portion that you call for and lord i pray that you bless the gift and the giver in jesus name amen Please rise as we sing doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father. Son and Holy Ghost. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to do two things at once today. I want the children to come up, and the children are going to come up, but for our children's message today, we're going to hear from our mission team. But as the children come up, I want to tell you something. If you all want to, you can sit right here so you'll see better. If you want to come on, sit in the right here. On the bench. Come come up here and sit. Actually, no, actually come up and sit beside Miss Christie. You'll see better. That way nothing will be in the way. There you go. Slide on down. Yeah, you can bring those up. The team can come on up too. You can squeeze in there, buddy. Yes, slide those. All right, uh, you can find whatever seat you want. None of them are booby trapped this morning. Um, there's a scripture that I want to start with that is I thought about our trip. Oh, I need mics and a clicker. <laughs> These two, Eric? Red. No, that one doesn't work. Red. Where is the clicker? All right. Okay. You can't have that one. It's too hot for you. There's only one person in this room that can handle that, Mike. <laughs> so um, the scripture that I want to share is Romans chapter 14, 
verses 19. It says, let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and mutual edification. Now, before we get started, I want to tell you young people, we're talking about missions. We're talking about a place that we went, some things that we did. But the scripture is, I think, what God really wanted us to do while we were there. It said, do what leads to peace and mutual edification. Do you have any idea what that, those two words, mutual edification, mean? You don't? They're really big ones. Going somewhere. <laughs> that you should be doing that as you go somewhere. So, Mila, that's good. But mutual edification means that you're making people feel good about who they are, about what God has for them to do. And, you know, it's not just that these people can do it. It's not just in New York, but God wants you to do that every day. So as you listen to this mission team and the things that we did, I want you to think about things you can do and the places you go, okay? So we're going to get started. So we have some pictures we're going to share. And I think, yep, I got to turn it on. All right, this is where we're going to start. This was members of our team along within the front um, is Laverne or Florence, who is the missionary that we're with there. And then I can't say her name. Who can say? What is it? Eugeti is one of the most amazing helper God servants in this entire world. And there may be somebody that will say a little bit about her. But this was a picture that we had taken um, while we were there. And I'll leave that up as we begin talking. And the first thing that I've asked is there were two um, rookies up here, two New York rookies. So I'm asking Noah and, well, he's got new names now. I used to call him Little Ray. He's also officially got the name Brandon now, which is also his brother, and Brandon back there. We don't know why Laverne started calling that, but literally she called him Brandon more than she did Ray on this trip. And because this is Ray the third and this is Ray the fourth, and we did a lot with Spanish, he's also Quattro. So you can call him whatever you want to now. But um, I'm going to ask you two to start just talking about what it was like for you to go to New York on this mission trip for the first time. A very uh, unique experience. Um, have been Keep talking. So <laughs> I had been praying for God to open my eyes and give me his eyes to see others, to see others the way that he sees them. And, uh, to say the least, he over-delivered. He did exactly what I asked for. And uh, you see people that hurt. You see people that are lost. But the people that we served in this church, they just wanted to know our language so they could feel at home because they're from all over the place, all over the world, and they just desire to know our language so they can ask somebody for help. And uh, it was such a blessing to be part of it. Uh, just, I don't have the words to give you the experience, uh, but I know I was in the right place, and I was doing exactly what I was called to do. And it was an experience that I'll never forget. And uh, if we go back next year, I'll be going back. Um, it was an amazing experience. The people there just truly appreciate and what we were part of. Uh, the, everyone there just, you could see it in their eyes. They loved being taught and it was uh, simple in some forms because when you think about it I couldn't remember how I learned the English language but our language is very complex and uh, very hard to pronounce certain words and these folks come from languages that are probably much easier to learn and much easier to pronounce the words 
words that we speak. So it was it was an eye opening experience. And city is a very nice. Uh, <laughs> I never felt safe. I felt God's presence the entire time, and the place we stayed in was absolutely amazing too. It was called the Hefspa House, and that comes from Isaiah 62:4, and the word Hefspa means God's delight. And the people there were absolutely amazing too. And uh, we had five flights of steps to go up <laughs> every day. So you got your workout in whether you wanted it or not. <laughs> and you sure didn't want to forget anything in your room. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was truly amazing uh, being there with this team and seeing everybody and how God worked through each person here and Amazing experience. Seeing this young man right here, this was this was amazing. Just seeing God work through you and your father, man, what a blessing. That's a segue to you, Noah. Oh boy. <laughs> I don't want to follow that up. Um, when I was on the way to New York. It was like I was going on another trip with my church family. I had no clue what to expect. I didn't even know where we were staying. I got there, looked up at the city. I'm like, what the heck did I just get myself into? <laughs> but along the way, I felt more and more comfortable. And Laverne helped me a lot. And I realized all of these people are directionally challenged. So I had to leave, lead everyone everywhere around New York. <laughs> so that, was, got, that got a little bit of stressful because I had never been on a subway before. <laughs> so as you can imagine, traveling was a little bit of a stressful experience. But somehow we got on the right train and the right bus every time except for once. <laughs> but I feel like we were supposed to go the opposite direction one time to go back because I feel like that was an eye-opener to it's okay to make mistakes and all of these people had made mistakes along the way at some time or another when we were teaching them and it was an example that we're not perfect you're not perfect nobody is gonna be perfect but all you can do is the best you can do with that situation that you're given so when I was teaching, well, not when I was teaching, the first day my dad was teaching. He wanted the easy lesson with all the vocabulary <laughs> that wasn't even the grammar part. But the second day he sprung it on me saying, hey, you're teaching today. I'm like, this is grammar. Grammar is so much more difficult in our language than anything else. So I, got, I made a plan, but... As you can probably imagine, that plan shifted entire, entirely. But I think it was what God wanted because as that plan shifted, they started having more fun. It was less of a lesson and more of a personal relationship building in that class. So it started off as a lesson. They were like, we don't really understand this but then I started trying to build those relationships and they started understanding they started trusting they started respecting and caring so what I learned is it's not about how much you want someone to know or if they want to know it's about having those relationship relationships with people breaking down those barriers and making bridges uh, between you and the person you're trying to get to so New York as a whole was so eye-opening on how important relationships are with new people, even if you can't even understand them. But it was just a great experience overall, and the pizza was amazing too. <laughs> Noah brought something up that um, as we were there, we had a devotion each morning, and kind of the theme for us became building bridges, not barriers. And um, he kind of picked up on that, and that's definitely something that we saw that was a part of what happened. Um, I'm going to go through some pictures here. 
And um, as it comes up, there'll be different ones on the team that'll talk, and I'll share some things along the way too. But this is Debbie's picture that she asked that she have an opportunity to talk about. So um, my group was probably a little bit more advanced than <clears throat> what you guys had. Um, I had a few, a few folks that were, well, I had one guy that it was his first night. He was from Mexico. But um, I kind of got in the middle of my group. I wanted to just kind of fit in with my group. And it was kind of like, building relationships with them at first it was just getting to know them and do life um, we learned or I taught them um, we were working on um, the family tree so just words like parents just teaching them how to say parent and getting them to understand that their parents were their mom and dad just as simple as that um, it was just amazing to teach them and just to love on them. Um, I had one young man, he came in and he was, he just asked me, he said, do you have a, a cell phone charger? And I was like, yeah. And, um, <clears throat> I gave it to him and his phone was dead. And it was like I had given, give him like a million dollars. He was just so appreciative. But um, <clears throat> it is just a great experience. But like Ray said, you can't really explain it. You can't put it into words. It's just going and doing. It's just amazing. Um, this is a picture. You can't really read it, but there's a story about the fifth floor of the Hepsa house. The Hepsa house, and I, we really do hope we get to go and stay there again. What I would say is I realize that we are, are such a small part of a huge picture of what God does in his kingdom. This house has been used for God's work since 1893, 1892 or 93. The fifth floor, we decided was appropriate for us. One, we all needed to exercise. But two, um, it used to only be four floors, and the fifth floor was created for the servants. And we fully recognized that God called us to New York to be his servants in the time we were there. Um, this is a picture that I want to comment on just briefly. This is um, Florence's house. This is where we met every morning to do our plan, and this is where we had our devotion time. And just quickly what I would say, it seemed like we went there, and the main thing was about the teaching and and building those relationships but I'm telling you that could not have happened the way it did were it not for this time of preparation and it reminds me as I look at that and think about it that we as we serve in the kingdom God calls us to do different things but there also needs to be time of preparation for us in our regular life which involves Bible study which involves worship which involves time alone with God in prayer and that enables us to experience the things and be who God wants us to be in terms of of being servants in his kingdom. So that, that picture, as mundane as it may seem, was one that meant a tremendous amount to me. This is a picture of um, Laverne Florence just doing her thing, and she is amazing at what she does. This is Esther, and I'm going to let her talk a little bit about her experience. Um, this year, it was more rewarding for me than the first year um, because... I made an immediate connection with my class. Um, when they came in and I greeted them and it was like I'd known them for a period of time because each one, once you, you, you'd be surprised, the universal language I believe is a smile. Mm -hmm. And once you smile at a person, it makes a world of difference. These people didn't know me, I did not know them. But the minute I started to greet them and share with them and like Debbie said we, we, we um, our class that night was um, learning the different uh, family tree members 
And so I grilled them and grilled them, and I thought, oh, maybe, maybe I'm going overboard. But they were latching on to every word that was coming out of my mouth. And as I would tell them to repeat what I said, like parents or son-in-law or brother, they were like all ears and eyes, and they were immediately writing on that paper just to make sure that they had it correctly. So if I said a word in English, they wrote it in their language on that paper so that they could remember. So finally, at the end of class that night, I said, I hope you guys have learned well today. And they were going, mucho, mucho, mucho. And I was going, I don't have any more. <laughs> I said, but we'll be back tomorrow. And so um, just to make sure, and I said, well, let me give you a quick review. And I said, Florence's brother is my husband. And they were like, KDC, KDC, what did she say? What did she say? And I said, let me say it again. Florence's brother is my husband. And you could see that little eyes, you know, everybody was, you know, like, oh, and one girl said, she's your sister-in-law. And I went, you got it. <laughs> And I said, yes, yes, that's correct. And a couple of times I, caught, I had to catch myself because I was speaking back to them in Spanish. And I was like, Florence says, no Spanish, no Spanish. <laughs> so, so Erica would say, yeah, there's another girl named Erica, she'd go, I do the Spanish, you do the English. I went, okay, thank you. <laughs> but it was so, so rewarding, so refreshing. And, and just to know that they latched on to every word to, that I was saying, it was like teaching them the gospel. It really was. And I was the whole time I'm, I'm standing there and I'm praying and saying, use me, Lord. Use me for your service. Because they went away, you know, with something every day. And I would say, review your homework. Go over your, what we've learned today. And then they'd come back the next day. And they were eager, ready to learn. So that's my take on that. Um, the barrier was trust, you know. Uh, initially, I said, how do I gain that trust that they would be interested in this class? But immediately, you know, God, he tore down that barrier between us. We latched on, and I think I have like eight friends forever um, because it was just so rewarding. So, yeah, Very good, good experience. I encourage each and every one of you to go. If you get the opportunity to do it, do it. You would be surprised how God can use each and every one of us for yeah. his glory. Amen. Um, we're going to keep going. They, they are not, they're really good, but they're not necessarily great listeners. I think they were supposed to speak about two minutes each, and that's not working. So we're, we're going to keep going, but I want the children to be able to go to your Bible adventure. So they're going to head back, and, um, and you'll get to hear more about what's going on with that. But we're going to continue um, because um, I like it when I feel like the team is doing what God leads them to do versus what their pastor asks them to do sometimes. So we're going to continue to hear stories. Y'all can come on. This is another picture of Esther and Laverne, some others, when the teaching is going on. Um, this is Noah and I. This is our class. Um, and we had one of the accelerated classes, um, but just really enjoyed building relationships. So I'm going to let them do more talking than me. Um, and this one is just an another picture. You can see the classroom. It, it's, it's the worship center of the church that we're serving at Fordham Community Church. But um, it, they take the sanctuary and just turn it into a bunch of groups that we teach English at. You can see um, Ray and Laverne back in the back working with the class. Ray wants to talk about this one for a minute. So this uh, was the last day. First day I was asked to be a helper with a fellow named Chuck and his wife Andrea. So I just did whatever Chuck and Andrea needed me to do that night. And then Laverne uh, gave me the news the following day that uh, Chuck and Andrea aren't going to be there. You're going to be the teacher. <laughs> so I let the Lord lead, and uh, what a blessing it was. Uh, so I got to personally get the chance to know a little bit about each student in my class. And uh, it started out simple. As they came in, I just asked them how their day went. Uh, what was interesting about their day and trying to get them to verbalize in English language um, to tell me about their day. And there were two little girls in the class that 
uh, at the end of it, they came up, gave me a hug with tears in their eyes, um, and asked me if I would be back next week. And when I broke the news and told them, sorry, I got to go back home, uh, they, they started crying. Um, and I did too. <laughs> so, so they walked away and they went and got, the, that was a name tag. So each of us had a tag on our, our shirt each night that had our name on it or whatever we put on it. And they came back and they had wrote this uh, note for me, uh, a little girl named Sadie and Lizbeth. Uh, they, they wrote this, and they called me Miss Array, is what they <laughs> called me. And uh, they, they wrote that little note for me, uh, very heartwarming. But it just goes to show that uh, when you take the time and let the Lord lead and let him love through you, how it impacts others and how they, in turn, come back and give that love right back to you. And uh, I had the opportunity to share the gospel with these folks at the end of the night we kind of wrapped the lesson up and I asked who all knew Jesus Christ and I could see a puzzling look in some of them's eyes and I had one young man uh, in the group named Carlos he said he had had the privilege of reading the Bible three times I was very impressed and uh, but he was still trying to make the connection but we prayed together and uh, I shared the Lord's Prayer with them um, and told them that I would make the commitment uh, to pray for each one of them each day. Uh, the last part of the exercise, I asked them uh, permission from Laverne first. Um, if I could pose the question, where can you see yourself five years from now? I wanted them to look at focusing on a goal while they were here. What can they look forward to and reach for and how they can pray to God to get them there in five years from now. Uh, the young man, Carlos, said he wanted to learn the English language so that he could join our military and serve our country. What an amazing statement. Uh, this young man came here, has only been here a couple years, and loves it so much that he wants to be the best sacrifice you can be for our country. Um, the other fellow, uh, Jose, this, the same. The, uh, Jose was in high school. Carlos was a uh, tradesman. He, every day he did plaster work and painting, and Jose was a uh, senior year in high school, but his five-year goal was to graduate college. So it was very uh, inspirational to see that once you got to communicate with these folks uh, and share love with them, that they would open up and share their life dreams uh, with, with each of us. So it was very moving. Good. Thank you. This is another picture of us there with just the teaching and the things that are going on, the special evenings that we had together. More of the same. This is another one of Ray and is that one of your students? Yeah, that was that was uh, Natalie. So she was well. I say most half of the students were very quiet, um, and when I asked them if they were scared to get in front of other people, uh, most of them said, "Yeah, they didn't like speaking in front of others." So I gave them a little tool that I learned long ago. Uh, when you're in front of people, most folks don't feel comfortable sitting in front of a group of people and a uh, uh, trick I was always taught was don't look, don't look at the people, look above them, look right over top of their heads. And uh, it's amazing at the comfort and peace that uh, that gives you when you feel overwhelmed or anxious uh, in a group body of people. So uh, when they came up, I told them to use that trick and it was, it was pretty cool. They, they were able to open up and uh, we were working on words, vocabulary. We had cut out uh, at Laverne's uh, little pieces, or it was like shirt, pants, boots, uh, suede. And it's amazing that words like that, suede or fashionable, uh, were really hard for their tongues to pronounce. Seems pretty easy for us, but uh, for Spanish-speaking uh, folks, it's really tough to pronunciate uh, those words. 
So I would have them take whatever picture they drew out of the bucket and uh, come up and write a sentence on the whiteboard for me and then turn around and deliver it to the rest of the class so that they would understand what they wrote on the board. And uh, th they did not look very enthused about doing this at first. <laughs> and uh, they would get up there, and uh, I could see them struggling. So I would stop, and uh, Natalie was trying to pronounce a word. So I asked her to watch my lips as I pronounced the word. And once she saw me say it a couple of times, she nailed it. And uh, you could see the smiles all over her face. And, and the rest of the group would just light up. It was, I mean... Like everybody here said, uh, if you ever have the opportunity to do this, uh, I would encourage you strongly to do it and uh, just watch the Lord work. It is just so amazing. Amen. This is a picture Noah asked if he could share a little bit about. Like I was talking about before, relationships is the big thing that I took away from this trip. This is Elsa. She was at both of the classes that we taught. At first, she was a little shy, but then about halfway through the first class, we could barely get her to stop talking. <laughs> um, she was amazing, one of the kindest people I've ever met, and uh, she's very giving as well. And the second class, um, she gave both my dad and I gifts. We both got uh, little keychains. What was yours? Uh, New York Apple. He got the New York Apple. She gave uh, me a guitar and an apple, so I think she likes me better. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it just showed how grateful uh, these people were to be learning this language and have someone that they could connect with and be seen as a person um, or could be seen as God sees them as a person rather than someone who came into our country and isn't like us. So I think that was the biggest thing for me in this picture was building these relationships and seeing how important that was. That's another of Noah and someone he was just able to carry on a conversation with there and I overheard them talking while I was teaching. And um, they were just talking about life. Th this is a, she's actually speaks English very well and helps out some, but they were just talking about who they were and what they did. Again, relationship building. I'm going to show you a few pictures now. We went, we worked a lot, but we also have fun. And God wants us to have fun too. Um, this is Chinatown that we went to and then spent an evening there. It was a lot of fun. Um, had some of the best Chinese food I've ever eaten. Um, this is a, bakery where um, a couple of guys got the biggest cookies I think they've ever had. I think it took six people to eat the cookies. Um, and then there's the famous New York pizza and I think Ray tried to outdo me in how much he could eat this year. And like father like son. We thought we met someone famous but then realized he wasn't as famous as we thought he was. And then we all worked until we had very little left to give, but God blessed us. So this was our trip home. So um, I promised Ray that I would give him a little bit of an opportunity to wrap up this portion, so I'll let Ray share the last words. Um, the first night when they were coming in, I was, I was sitting down, and uh, I'd get up and, and greet each of them, and my group, was more French than they were. I had one Spanish speaking, and um, as they came in, it it was it was you could tell they weren't really trusting me. But as we went on, and I let them know that I cared about them learning and um, just trying to share that love that Jesus wants us to share. As the night went on, it it got better and better, and um, I had one guy was sitting on my right. Every word that we did through the vocabulary, he was writing in French. I mean, he wanted to make sure. So um, when it was over that night, they gave homework. When it came back the next day, 
three of them had wrote sentences, and uh, it was just uh, amazing to watch each of them. Because my group, I had a couple that was really struggling, so I'm trying to I'm trying to keep everybody else going, and trying to go one on one with these, and uh, so we were writing sentences, and I had them. A lot of them were writing the same sentence, and Laverne did not like that. <laughs> <laughs> she was not happy. I, but, I mean, the only way I could get them to do it was we'd, t we'd take a sentence and they would write it, and um, then we would go over it. But it, just as you, as you keep building those relationships, I, I mean, I got six or eight people that I'm definitely friends with forever. And whether I see them again when we go next time, I don't know. But... It's just amazing to watch God work through you, even when you don't think you're able, you're able. I mean, he gives you what you need. And if you've never been on a mission trip, I definitely tell you to step, step out of your comfort zone and go do something. God will give you what you need, I promise. I mean, I'm not a teacher, but I did the job. <laughs> All right, let's give them a hand. <laughs> Don't take your stools and take them back. So, um, actually, I'm going to bring one of the stools back. Um, I really didn't plan for them to talk that long. I don't think you want me to do my typical length sermon, considering we got seven minutes left before this is supposed to be over. It ain't going to end in seven minutes regardless. But um, I'm going to share, well, I didn't plan on sharing this, but I think God's placed it on my heart. It's one of those things that, that I think we've learned. Um, believe it or not, trying to make sure I don't think any of the people that were up here really liked talking when they came up here um, they weren't excited when I told them they, they knew because they knew how we do things that there would be some sharing but they were hoping it wasn't going to amount to but so much and they were going to be able to squeak by and then they get up here and they just won't be quiet and um, that's what happens when God is moving and um they said something, and as I stood here and listened, they were so right. They said, Greg, we can share, but we can't really share it in a way that they can know what it was like. I think it was Quattro that said that, said that, that words just can't describe what we experienced, and they're right. Um, and another thing, I talked to Debbie as we, um, as we were on the way up there and I, I said Debbie I want you to explain something to me I said this is your third trip to New York and you were the staunchest person in this entire church by and I knew you said it you talked about it to my face that why in the world we need to be going off other places when there are plenty of needs right here in Nelson County and people need help here and she was just adamant about that I said Debbie what changed she said, I did. God changed me. And I, I said, well, okay, well, let me ask you this. Do people in New York need people more than the people in Nelson do? And she looked at me, she knew I was messing with her. And she said, no, they both need us. But she came to the realization that if we follow God where God leads us to, it enables him to enable us to be who God wants us to be. So when we went to New York, and we began to be willing to take to heart the scripture, let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and mutual edification. We began to embrace people that when we first got there, we would have looked at as different than us, not connected to us, not like us. And we began to love and care for them, and they became friends of ours like we had never had before. Then, when we come back to Nelson County, there are people that we don't even realize that we're putting barriers between. 
that we're not communicating with, that we're not loving, that we're saying things about, that we're not being God's people in the way God wants us to be. And we didn't realize that as much until after we went to New York and came back. So we weren't able to help people here the way God wanted us to because we weren't being the people God wanted us to be. And it wasn't that we didn't have the ability to, but God wanted to use us and at the same time change us. If we go and we serve, and I don't care where it is, I don't care if it's across the street, I don't care if it's your Thanksgiving dinner with your family, I don't care if it's New York, I don't care if it's Africa, I don't care where it is, God's going to touch you and change you. But if God leads you to go somewhere that is outside of your comfort zone, listen. If God leads you to go somewhere that's outside of your comfort zone, because you know people say a lot of times, well, there are people here in Nelson County. You know why you want to stay in Nelson County? Because you want to do what you want to and not what God wants you to do, and you don't want to be uncomfortable. That's why we do it. Now, if you're doing what's uncomfortable and helping people in a way that you don't think you can, then I, I believe that you may be doing what God wants you to. But God doesn't call us to do what just feels good all the time. He wants us to do stuff we can't do on our own. That's why this trip to New York has changed each and every one of us and why it's so difficult to put into words. It isn't just about walking streets where there's bigger buildings than there are in Nelson. It's not just being around people that speak a different language. It's not just getting up and trying to teach in a way that you haven't taught before. It's because God speaks to you over and over and over again so many times a day that when you come back, you're so excited you can't stop talking. Didn't you hear that? And several of them said, if you get a chance, I'm not going to say if you get a chance, I'm going to say, if God calls you. But you know, God's calling a lot of people. And we have a chance. I want to just share this now. We have a chance next year. Laverne's already told me we're working on the trip for next year. Next year's New York trip is going to be a little bit different. It's probably going to happen over the weekend of August the 9th. And the reason we already know about it is because this has been something that's been going on in New York through um, the church there for several years, they give out backpacks. And uh, Laverne talked about it a little bit when she was here. I think the first time they did it, they, their goal was to give out 500 backpacks. It's grown every year. Last year, they gave out 1,800 backpacks filled with supplies in about an hour, hour and a half with people all over the city, particularly focused in their community. Well, there's a church that's been being a part of doing that for several years something has happened that church isn't going to be able to help this coming year and Laverne you can imagine in our humanness she said oh goodness what's going to happen now how how are we going to do this this has been people that have been doing it that's who we've been counting we hadn't had to go to anybody it's just kind of fallen into place and she said Greg do you think there's any chance that there there are people at Woodland who would consider helping take on that role of helping with the backpacks next year And I said, I don't know, but we can pray about it. And I believe if God wants to people, I believe that our church is in a place that if if God calls them, I believe they will respond. That's what I believe. And so that's what I said to Laverne about you about a month ago. And so I'm going to tell you, this is what it would look like. We can be a part of helping collect probably money and then she would order backpacks. We aren't responsible for all the backpacks. That's just a way if you're not going and you want to contribute, you can be a part of it. But if you're willing to go to New York, you don't have to teach a word of English. Not this time. But if you're willing to go, what we do is we go. There's all these backpacks, literally over a 1,000 backpacks that we set up assembly lines and spend a long time putting those backpacks together for children. We spend a lot of time praying for those children that will end up with those backpacks. Then... There's a time we go out, and this isn't announced ahead of time. They're flyers, and we become a part of delivering the flyers in the community so they understand that's what's happening. Then their pastor goes to another area 
where it's more connected directly to some of the schools they partner with and make sure that those backpacks get delivered so they get delivered directly to the school building. Some people will be doing that. And then on Saturday during that day, you're literally there handing out backpacks to kids who would not have them otherwise. That's what it would look like. It sounds pretty simple. Sounds like it's a little bit easier than maybe trying to teach English. But if God leads you to go, it will change your life. Because that's just how God works. Laverne said, Greg, I need 12. I said, you know, Laverne, if God wants it, I think we'll have 12 people from Woodland that will go next year. And not just from Woodland. It could be other people from your family, from the community. But that's a goal Laverne and I have, and we're trusting God. We feel God placed that on us. And that's why we've started this early. So be thinking about that. We also, I'll tell you, because we talked about this too. I said, Laverne, one of the biggest things is, because she said, Greg, we need to know ahead of time. You know what it's like for the train tickets. You know what it's like for a place to stay. God's nudging you. You cannot, you cannot wait until July. You can't wait till June. You can't even really wait till January of next year. And let me tell you why. The train tickets right now, we already looked them up. Train ticket to go to New York is $41 per person. Train ticket back is $41. You wait to January, it won't be that. You do what Debbie did the first time and wait to the same month. That train ticket, the first time you went was how much, Debbie? $300. $41 versus $300 for the same trip. That's why you don't wait. That's why you decide pretty soon. You say, but I don't know what I'm going to be doing. If God's calling you, I'm not saying this for me. If God's calling you, are you willing to make it a priority right now? To say, God, if this is what you want me to do, I'm going to make this what recognizes what you're calling me to do and you want to use me in this way and I'm willing to do this. And the other part of that is the Hepsa house is just amazing. And we would love to go back and be a part of that. We meet people from all over that are coming to do work. We, we meet them in the lobby when we're going out. We hear their stories when we come back. Literally, there's a book on the door that people write their testimonies in of how God uses them while they're there. And you get to just open that book, your book. You have a personal one for your bedroom that you read story after story after story of what God's done. And then you write your story in there before you. People, this experience will change your life. We come to church, we, we hear the scripture, we talk about how we can be God's people. But if all we do is sit and talk and listen and never go out and do, are we really being God's people? And then the last thing I would say is we look at that scripture about as much as we can. It'd be about us promoting peace and mutual edification and it's this whole building bridges versus barriers thing we live in a world that likes to talk about that but our natural human tendency a lot of times is just to recognize people that are like us and people that are different than us and most of the time without intending it sometimes it's intentional but most time without intending it we're putting up those barriers scripture says we shouldn't I tell you, every one of us that went to New York, we recognize those barriers in a way we don't recognize them when we're doing our daily routine. It changed us. Now, that's not the only way God changes us, but it made us more of the person God desires us to be. And that's why person after person after person up here said, if you get a chance, please do it. There was a time they were sitting where you are, especially Debbie. If you had told her, Debbie, if you get a chance, please do it, she would turn her head the other way. You ain't talking to me. God got through to her, and it has changed her life. And if you don't believe me, you go sit down and talk to her. You'll have to reserve some time because she's going to take a while. I mean it. That's what we need. That's who we need to be. And it may not be going to New York, but God is calling you and asking you to do something. Praise get up here so I don't have to keep talking. We need to, we need to worship and get about doing instead of simply listening. But... I hope you have, have heard at least a fraction of the passion 
of the change, of the experience that this team had. Because as much as we love the people in New York, and, and Ray and Debbie came in my office this morning, God bless them, and, and said, Greg, any way we could go like two or three times a year? And I don't know. If God wants to, it'll happen. He said, but, but we only went for a few days, and we, we, just, we built these relationships, and, and we love these people. How much more could we do if we could just, if we could just see them more? <coughs> if we could just see them more often? That's what happens when you give, when you allow God to move. <coughs> it's not about New York. It's about God's people. It's about being God's people. But it takes a commitment, a willingness to respond. Not when it's convenient, not when everything else is being taken care of, not when... Not when you don't have something else to do because you will always have something else to do. That's one of the biggest ways Satan works. Satan doesn't have to have you doing a bunch of stuff God doesn't want you to do. All he has to do is get you busy enough that you won't do the stuff God does want you to do. That's Satan's favorite way to work is to just keep you busy. Don't raise your hand, but how many of you here think you're probably busier than God wants you to be? Don't raise your hand. But how many of you are busier than you think God probably wants you to be? That is Satan's tool. And he uses it to keep you from doing the things God wants you to do. Tell Satan today, no more. I do what God wants me to do. And make that commitment. Let's stand together. <coughs> and as we sing, respond as God would lead. The altar's open. I'm here to hear and accept any decisions you may have to share. You were the one at the beginning, one with God the Lord was high. You hid in glory and creation, now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is.
Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name of all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand again. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. I'm not going to extend the invitation, but we're going to play another song as the praise team always does and um, God's invitation never ends it just doesn't we can say no we can say no again we can say yes and then renege on it we can say no again but God is going to continue to pursue you now it won't last forever because we don't live on this life forever but I can tell you the more times you say no the more times you're robbing yourself of the blessing God desires to give you on this earth and the opportunity to be used by God to bring that blessing to other people as well I tell you there's there's people who try to buy time and I've heard it because I've, I've had conversations with them and say you you know I, I I think I understand and I really want to become a Christian. I'm just not sure yet, but because you know there's still, I, I'm just not sure I can be that type of person yet. There's, there's still things I just, I, I, I really feel like I, I want to know. There's places I want to be and I don't want to be a hypocrite, but that's where I want to go. They, really, they're telling that to the preacher. But I'm glad they're being honest and basically they're saying, I'm not ready to live like a Christian yet. I want to live over here and do the things I know God doesn't want me to do. But there's going to come a time that I'll come back. Really? But people do that. You know people that do that. You may even be one of the people that do that. But I'm telling you, we're fooling ourselves. The world tells us this over here looks good, feels good, and when you give it up, you can't go back. And that's right, you don't go back, but you don't go back because you don't want to go back because over here is so much better. Over here, you begin to experience the truth and see it. And when life gives you struggles, you have power and ability to look and see in ways that, that God of the universe helps you through them. And there is joy that's so much deeper than anything the world can ever give. So I encourage you, whether it's responding to God because you don't know him as your Lord and Savior yet, whether it's responding to God because he's asking you <coughs> to do something that you've known for a long time that God wanted you to do and you just haven't been willing for whatever reason, don't say no anymore. D don't even think you're just being quiet and waiting because sometimes that being quiet and waiting is just your, um, your way of saying no. God knows your heart. But God desires so much more than what we're willing to receive sometimes. Will you trust him? Will you open your heart? Will you say yes, even though it's scary and uncertain? I tell you, the first time Ray Spivey went to New York, he went with all kinds of apprehensions. He just knew he wasn't going to like it. Probably wasn't ever going to go again. Um, it just was it found every reason to be negative about it. And now you can't keep the guy quiet about how wonderful of experience it is. And again, people, it's not about New York. I put people up here so you could see what God did in this moment. But it's not about New York. It's about being who God calls us to be when he calls us to do that in a way that takes us outside of our comfort zone beyond where we might expect to be. Please respond as God would lead. As our praise team plays us out, don't leave here without getting that right with God and without following through. Lord, you are an amazing, amazing God. And we love you. And, and not only are you a God that loves us, but you give us opportunity to be co-creators with you, to be a part of what's going on in this world, to experience the joy that comes only from being your people. 
So God, help us to recognize and accept how you're calling us individually and as a body to do that right now. And may we respond. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to close you guys out with Forever Rain. You are good when there's nothing good in me. You are love, you are love on display for all to see. You are light, you are light when the darkness closes in. You are hope, you are hope, you have covered all my sin. You are peace, you are peace. When my fear is crippling, you are true, you are true, even in my wandering. You are joy, you are joy, you're the reason that I sing. You are light, you are light, in you death has lost its sting. And oh, I'm running to your arms. I'm running to your arms, the riches of your love will always be enough, nothing compares to your embrace, light of the world forever reign. You are more, you are more than my words will ever say. You are Lord, you are Lord, all creation will proclaim. You are here, you are here, in your presence I may hold. You are God, you are God, of all us I'm letting go. And oh, I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world forever reign. My heart will sing no other name. Jesus, Jesus, my heart will sing no other name. Jesus, Jesus, my heart will sing no other name. Jesus, Jesus. Riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world forever reign. And oh, I'm running to your arms. I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world forever reign. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you guys next week. Go and have a blessed day.